are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Locking down the middle of the day. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios, this is Hunt Palmer. Hunt Palmer coming to you from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studio downtown in the capital city on this gorgeous spring Friday in the capital city. Things were brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Jacob Beck back there on the ones and twos as well as Kathy Spazali. And glad you are with us for the next two hours. Plenty, plenty to get to on this Friday. Preston Guy in 15 minutes to talk about LSU's spring game. Chris Tamui is with us at 1.30 to talk some LSU baseball. Uh, the Saints have made a couple of signings today. One with some SEC flair. We'll talk about that at 2 o'clock. Ben McKee from Go Vols 24-7 will also join us coming up at 2.30 to talk about LSU and Tennessee from Knoxville from the Tennessee perspective. Been a minute since Jacob Beck was back there on audio. He returns from a little uh, vacation. Mr. Beck, how are things? Pretty good. Um, I, uh, as we talked about before the show started, I made a little bit of misjudgment um, in terms of signing up for doing the morning show today when uh, we were returning from our trip and got back to New Orleans at 1230 last night. Okay. So I got back to my house at 130 okay. and then had to wake up at six. So, okay, uh, well. so it, it wasn't great uh, in terms of, in terms of that, but uh, overall the trip was good. So I know that you played out of Pacific Grove, the poor man's pebble, as they say, I need yeah. a score report or at least a good shot report. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So the, <laughs> the, the back nine is just absolutely stunning. It's, it's incredible that that is a public golf course that you can yeah. play at for $45. Um, the front nine is, is, is not you know it, it's a pretty it's pretty standard uh fair but uh the back nine i shot eight over so i, I feel really good about that it was, it was really it was and i actually put two out of bounds as well so uh two out of bounds eight over i'll take it that's, on the back nine. that's quite good that's quite a few pars you make any birdies yeah uh no no birdies i did have uh i did have an opportunity for a birdie uh but missed it the, the greens weren't slow but there was a lot of slope to them so uh, not not great putting performance, but I did have some birdie chances. Uh, but I did have uh, four pars on the back nine. So it's excellently done. Well, we're glad to have you back. Let's get things rolling here on this Friday. Um, LSU and Tennessee tonight. Interesting. Um, the way that both head coaches are shaping their pitching matchups. As we were going off the air yesterday, we kind of found out what LSU was going to do, and that's they're going to throw Gage Jump tonight. They're going to throw Luke Holman tomorrow, and they'll go TBA in Game Three. Um, why? Why would they do this? Well, I don't know exactly, but I can throw out some context and we'll try to figure it out. Um, Obviously, you have the ability to do this because you played Thursday, Friday, Saturday last week and the week before. So Gage Jump pitching in game one does not move him up in terms of rest. So that's one reason you can do it. You do not have a Tennessee ace to deal with. I firmly believe two weeks ago, LSU was trying to get Luke Holman off of Higgins-Smith we saw the week prior that Auburn and Arkansas played a one nothing game, and Hagen Smith won that game. You could not at that point, where your SEC record was, risk Holman having a really nice outing and losing a really low-scoring game against a guy that's striking everybody out. I understood it, I agreed with it, and I think that's where we were two weeks ago. That is not the case this week. Tennessee does not have an ace, and we'll talk about their pitching here in a second, but that's not why LSU is making this move. And this furthers my point. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just how I feel. Unless you have Aaron Nola slash Paul Skeens slash Hagen Smith, I really don't care what day they pitch on. All 30 of these games count the same. And it is conventional wisdom. You would pitch your best guy in game one, your second best guy in game two, and your third best guy in game three. But since they all count the same, like, Florida's not getting points taken off because they pitched Jack Caglione in Game 3 here and run-ruled LSU. Vanderbilt was in a pretty nice situation last week when they split the first two games and had Carter Holton going in Game 3. There's no rule against that, and I think there are a lot of people that say, hey, you got to throw your ace, you gotta, you got to you got to be a man, throw the guy out there on, on Friday night, and that's, that's the way you got to roll. And a lot of these guys are the same people that wanted LSU to play Alabama again in the 2011 National Championship. I'm not personally one of those. I'd like to work a little smarter, not necessarily be the toughest guy in the room. 
So the way that I kind of digest this is that it feels like Jay's playing a little bit of psychology with his team, maybe. You're not dealing with an ace in game one from Tennessee. So you're throwing Gage jump on there, and you've got a pretty good chance to win the game. Tennessee's really good on offense. They're at home. Like You're not guaranteed to win it by any stretch of the imagination, but you've got a reasonable chance to win the game with Gage jump pitching. If you were going against Hagen Smith with Gage jump on the mound, I wouldn't call that a significant chance to win. A chance to win, sure, it's a baseball game. Significant, probably not. But in this game one, you've got a pretty good chance to win. If you do win, you show up to the ballpark the next day with your ace on the mound trying to win this series on the road. First series win of the year. That's a pretty good place to feel. If you lose with Gage Jump on the mound, you come back to the ballpark with your ace on the mound with a chance to even the series. It feels like this is a little bit of psychology because when Jay Johnson made this call and made it public, we did not know who Tennessee was going to throw on Friday night. So it wasn't really a matchup thing. And I don't think that he's moving Luke Holman to face Drew Beam. I, he could be. It's certainly in the realm of possibility. Beam is certainly more accomplished than Chris Stamos, who we're going to see tonight from Tennessee. But it's not like he's a world beater. He's a good college pitcher. So I don't think that that's it. To me, it's a psychological thing with his players. He feels like no matter what happens on Friday, you're going to feel pretty good entering Saturday's game. And I think that's important. This is probably a fragile team right now, mentally, based on where they are. Probably. Maybe not, but probably. And I think trying to help them out a little bit with that, either sending your ace to the mound with your back against the wall trying to even the series, or sending your ace on the mound to try to win the series, feels like the best way to approach things. I don't have any problem with this at all. I'll tell you when I don't, when I do have a problem, like I don't like Jared Jones taking leadoff, but this feels okay to me. So let's talk about this Tennessee pitching staff because the offense is scary and I don't really want to talk about that right now. You're going to see Chris Stamos tonight. He's left-handed. He's a fifth-year senior. He started his college career in junior college. He went to Cal Berkeley. Now he's in Knoxville. Uh, He has been used basically as a reliever this year. He's got 13 innings pitched on the season. In those 13 innings, he's only gives up four hits. That's very good. Uh, Five runs all earned, not Awful, not great. Um, Eight walks is a lot in 13 innings, and 12 strikeouts is a reasonable amount. His longest outing of the year this year was a 51-pitch outing against Albany where he threw three innings. Now, if he's cruising tonight as a fifth-year senior who doesn't have huge draft prospects, it wouldn't shock me at all to see him throw 85 or 90 pitches. It also wouldn't shock me if he goes two innings, gives up uh, two runs, and is out of the game. I think Tony Vitello is probably going to play this by year. We'll ask Ben McKee in the second hour what he thinks about it. But I think you're going to see Chris Stamos kind of go until he can. And the expectation is if he gives us seven outs, that's kind of where he's been all year. If he gives us 16 outs, that's fantastic. This has not been a traditional starting pitcher for Tennessee. So that's what you're seeing tonight, a fifth-year lefty who's been out of the bullpen. Tomorrow is Drew Beam. I think most of you know who Drew Beam is, LSU Played Tennessee five times last year. Uh, he pitched in the uh, the Sunday game that Tennessee blew open here at the box. He was also in their rotation two years ago when they were so good. Um, he's been an interesting case for three years in Knoxville. Because when you just watch him pitch, you would suggest, yeah, that guy could pitch on Fridays. He's a big-time draft prospect. His numbers are probably absurd. His fastball's in the mid-90s. He does throw a pretty good slider. It's just odd that he doesn't strike many guys out and hasn't for three years. And I don't have a really good explanation for that. You're talking about a guy who, in 44 innings this year, has given up 47 hits, so more than a hit an inning. 24 runs in 44 innings. That's um, 18 of those have been earned. 40 strikeouts and 7 walks. Just solid numbers. He got smashed by Georgia and Ole Miss. Against Georgia two weeks ago, two and two-thirds innings, eight hits, seven runs, four of them were earned, two walks, only one strikeout. In those two and two-thirds innings, he gave up three doubles and two home runs. And then three weeks ago against Ole Miss, five and a third innings, six hits, 
four runs, three of them earned, did not walk anybody, struck out five, but in those five and a third innings, three home runs allowed to the Ole Miss Rebels. So in those two outings, he threw eight innings. He gave up 11 runs, five homers, and eight doubles. So he got hit hard. But last week against Auburn, who's not very good, but last week against Auburn, seven innings, three hits, just one earned run, eight strikeouts and one walk, did not allow a home run. So he's coming off of his best outing of the season. And you'll see him on Saturday. That's when Luke Holman will go. I feel fine about that matchup. And then Sunday, Xander Seacrest is going to get the start. He's another senior left-hander like Chris Stamos. Uh, he has started three SEC games, Ole Miss, Georgia, and Auburn. Not necessarily the creme de la creme of the SEC, but Georgia's got a good offense. Um, against Ole Miss, just two and a third innings, five hits and a run. Against Georgia, six innings of shutout baseball, which was very, very good. Seven strikeouts and one walk. Against Auburn, went two innings, gave up three runs. I watched some tape on Xander Seacrest uh, from some of those outings. Nothing he throws is firm. It's an 88, 89 mile an hour fastball. It's kind of a slurvy breaking ball in the high 70s. Like, it, as senior left handers go, he's not going to throw 97 miles an hour. He's not going to throw 93 miles an hour. He touched 90 a couple times on the highlights I saw. But this is not a great Tennessee pitching staff. And that's what this is going to boil down to. We'll talk to Dabui about it in 20 minutes. But LSU is going to have to hit. Because I don't care if it's Gage Jump. I don't care if it's Luke Holman. I don't care if it's Griffin Herring, Nate Ackenhausen. I don't care if it's Christian Little or Aiden Moffitt. I don't care if it's Gavin Guidry. Like, whoever LSU throws out there is going to have their hands full. And it's very doubtful that in any of these three games, you're going to hold Tennessee to two or three runs. I, I, I would right now allow Tennessee to score five runs in all three games, and I'd go play. You're just not going to put the clamps on this team for nine innings in that ballpark, I don't think. Now, Chris Blair texted me a little bit earlier and said the wind is gusting up to 40 miles an hour right now. I don't know if it's in or out. I don't know if it's sustained. I don't know if it's going to be that way coming up in a few hours when they play the first pitch. We'll ask Ben McKee that a little bit later. But Tennessee's going to hit. I told you they hit 14 home runs in three games against Auburn last week. Like, that's just the reality. LSU's bats will have to hit against this staff, which is not that good. It's just not. So, it's going to be an offensive series. Buckle in. You're probably never out of the game and probably never have it put to bed until you get the last outs. But, hey, LSU's going to go up there and try to right the ship. 0-4 in SEC series thus far. This will be a tough one to win. We'll see what they can do a little bit later on today. We'll talk to the movie about it in 15 minutes. Ben McKee in an hour and 15 minutes. When we come back, talking some spring game with Preston Guy. It's the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Boudreaux's Electric. All about the peace of mind that Boudreaux's Electric can give you. They're a certified Generac dealer. They are a premier Generac generator dealer. Storm season is coming. Give yourself the peace of mind of knowing that you're not going to lose power. Whether you're at home riding out the storm and you've got a family there and you want to be sure that your power stays on, or if you evacuate, which we do from time to time around here, when you come back, you don't want the house to be 100 degrees. It's August. You don't want your fridge to have lost everything, your freezer to have lost everything. It's preventable with a generator from Boudreaux's Electric. Every generator they sell you comes with an extended warranty, either seven years or 10 years, depending on the type of generator that you purchase. And when it gets installed, it's going to be done by a full-time Boudreaux's Electric employee with the highest quality in copper and tubing. And they're going to do most of it underground, so it's not really unsightly sitting right there outside of your home. New Gonzalez location is opening very, very soon. You will not want to miss that. Give them a call. 985-397-1562. 985-397-1562. That is Boudreaux's Electric. Our listeners fire off their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge.
Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. project with John Deere deals by sunshine whether you're working hard or playing hard our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle. Matt Moscona inviting you to join us for Friday's AFR presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Preview in LSU, Tennessee, the Tigers' spring game. We'll recap Pell's Kings. Join us Friday's AFR 36, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Congratulations to this year's Ultimate Bracket Challenge winners. First place of $2,024 is Michael Mercanti of Hammond. Second place with a 4K TV and soundbar is Richard Sabin of Baton Rouge. Not with an A, it's with an I, so no worries there. And third place was a tie, actually, but we're so nice that we're going to both give them a two-night stay at the Beau Rivage, and that is uh, actually the chat's very own Bilbo Baggins and Clayton Rooney. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. couple nights at the Bow for Bilbo and Clayton Rooney. Yeah. I, I have a suggestion. The Bow's great. I, I very much enjoy my time there. Go play Fallen Oak. I don't care if you play golf or not. It rocks. I will be back in the near future. Had my first uh, Fallen Oak experience during the bye week back in the fall. <sighs> Real good stuff. Um, so congrats to all those folks who... Uh, who won? I would not have won anything. I had UConn picked, but everybody else, everything else in my bracket was a total disaster. Uh, let's head off to the Jim's Fire Arms Hotline. Let's talk some LSU football with Preston Guy, TigerBait.com. Preston, how are you? You know, hon, I got to say, on my bracket, I'm a little salty, too. Uh, I had UConn over Purdue in the championship. Ah. Got all of that right, and I got second, so I went exactly $0. Mm, from winner take all. Mm, gotta hate yeah, that. It was, it was McNeese that. killed me, man. I had McNeese in the Sweet 16. I, I should have <laughs> went with my brain and not my heart. Man. Yeah, that was not a, not a great call. But most calls on bracket time are, are not great when the uh, the actual basketball starts. Um, what is your approach to a spring game? How important is it? How completely irrelevant is it? What's your What are your thoughts? Well, it's, it's pretty 
pretty important to see, you know, pecking order and to see what you're going to expect out of the team. It, it's a dress rehearsal. You know, you don't you don't have preseason football games in NCAA football, you know, so it, it is what you get to see, you know, where players are going to line up, you know, what string people are and how they look in a dress rehearsal. You know, it, it's pretty interesting if you are someone who really wants to know what's going to be in the team. You know, there's there's two types of fans, the happy ones who show up in August and look at the roster and, you know, the tryhards who look at every recruiting update, every decommitment, every spring game, every practice, and uh, I'm in the latter. Yeah, and those are the folks that listen. So uh, you're probably talking to a whole <laughs> host of them at this point. Um, all right, where do your eyes go first tomorrow then? First and foremost is going to be, can that defensive front seven hold its own against this stout offensive line? Most of practice, the answer's been no. And there's been a, a play here or there. We know what we got in the offensive line, but uh, defensive front seven, eh, it's been a little shaky. So we're going to see how they hold up in a dress rehearsal. Uh, I'm going to keep my, my expectations low on that front, but uh, hopefully they can at least show to hold their own. And then uh, I'll say after that, my gaze is going to go towards that backup quarterback battle because this is football and uh, you know it's very often that your backup quarterback is thrust into action and right now it is a tightly contested battle between Ricky Swan and uh, <laughs> Ricky Collins and AJ Swan <laughs> combined them there that's all right yeah. uh, no look um, I, let's go back to the defensive line then we talked a little bit earlier about some of the young players uh, about Deshaun Womack and some of those a couple of weeks ago but what about some guys that have been around for a while is there reason to expect a, a jump in play with maybe some help from Bo Davis from guys like Jacoby and Guillory or Savion Jones? Yeah, I was going to say, Jacoby and Guillory is probably the one guy at defensive tackle where you're happy about with his spot. Brian Kelly talked about him as a run stopper, which is one of the things I'm going to be looking for. Is he truly a good run stopper, or is he just the best of what you've got? Um, you know, and I, I think Jacoby and Guillory is a highly recruited guy and a guy who, frankly, has had to sit behind a lot of good players. Jordan Jefferson, Mason Smith. Uh, you think about, you know, um, um, uh, Mac Mackay Wingo. Those are three pretty darn solid players where, you know, at best he's your fourth defensive tackle, and, and now he's stepping up to be your one guy. Is, is the play time and coaching going to step his game up to the next level? Because I think he's got draftable player potential. He just hasn't had that production at LSU for the, you know, aforementioned reasons. So he, he's definitely a guy I'll be looking at quite a bit. A name that's been mentioned a few times uh, throughout press conferences has been Paris Shand and kind of what they want to do with him. Not a huge factor last year. Is that role going to increase this year? Yeah, well, there's, you know, Swinson's out of the way now. So, um, you know, he, he, he'll he be opened up to more play time. He's going to have to fend off Deshaun Womack for snap time. I'm sure, you know, they'll rotate in and out. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, and on Saturday, he actually had two plays that I call sacks. One where... You know, you can't tackle the quarterback, but he's there, and they let his throat get off, and my thought was, eh, it's a sack. So I saw him make two sacks. Um, I think he's just going to be a solid contributor. Um, I don't know if he's a, a, a big-time playmaking defensive end, but hopefully he's someone who can give some outside run contain, put a little bit of pressure on the quarterback, and, and really give them some hope. But, it, you know, if he's not, just understand Deshaun Womack is there in the defensive end spot is stacked a little more nicely than the defensive tackle spot. Look, in the uh, in fall camp last year, Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors just did whatever they wanted to do, and they pretty much did that when they got to the season as well. They're not there anymore. Do you think the corners will be able to hold their own tomorrow against the wide receivers? I think they're going to do better than the defensive line. We'll do better against that offensive line. Number one, the offensive line is better than the receiving core this year, and that's not a shot at the receiving core because the receiving core is just fine. The offensive line is just going to be one of the best units in the country. Number two, um, I think that the defensive backs have shown more improvement than the defensive line in this fall camp. You know, they're making some plays here and there. Sage Ryan had multiple interceptions in one practice. I think that they're stepping up some new guys. I think B.J. Woodland's going to be someone to watch out for. He's a guy who's been getting starting reps, and he's nimble, and he's long, you know, uh, I could see him making some plays. I do expect Kyron Lacey and that core to really have the upper hand, but I think it's going to be much closer than what you see on the defensive line uh, compared to the offensive line. 
This is not something I've thought about at all this spring, and I think I'm probably in the majority with that because when you think about LSU's offensive line and you think about left tackle, you go, well, they got Will Campbell. He's one of the best in the country, if not the best in the country, and I, I believe that. Um, who's after him? I, I'm not even talking about injury. Like, down the road when he's gone, does LSU have an heir apparent at left tackle? Because I'm imagining well, that Will Hamble's not going to play a ton tomorrow, quite frankly. <laughs> um, I hope he doesn't. I, I, honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing both the bookend tackles take a day off, but we'll probably see them get a little bit of action out there. We do want to give a full dress rehearsal to some guys. Um, you know, I'm not sure that the immediate guy who comes in is the same guy as your future guy. I look at a guy like Weston Davis and how talented he is, um, and I wonder if, if he's a guy who eventually works his way up. I think day one, your backup tackles are going to be Tyree Adams and uh, Bo Bordelon. I think that's who you're looking at. And we're talking about guys who a pretty strong spring. There's plenty of clips of them out there, you know, eating up that second string defensive line. So I think I, I, I think that it's actually two separate answers is what you're looking for. Because while a guy like Weston Davis uh, is highly talented and probably a tackle of the future, five-star guy, he's out there playing basketball right now or was playing basketball a month yeah. ago for a high school team, you know, and uh, whereas, all these other guys are out here playing spring ball and getting ready to go. You, I doubt he'll be ready to play by August, but maybe next August, yeah. he's a guy who could surpass a lot of guys who are getting experience right now. I trust Brad Davis. Whoever wants to put out there, I'll, I'll be just <laughs> fine with at this point. I got a uh, early thought on most outstanding player of the spring game. Uh, that's Caleb Jackson, based on everything we've seen <laughs> with the offensive line against that defensive line and how few running backs there actually are out there. Uh, are you excited to see him tomorrow? I am, but I take. I actually don't think he gets a ton of action because yeah. um, if there's a position group right now where if you get one injury to and all of a sudden everything is just thrown in disarray for this team, wouldn't you say that's running back? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> imagine Caleb Jackson goes out there and has 15 carries and, you know, uh, breaks an ankle out there. I mean, heaven forbid, but like, I honestly think he and Josh Williams are going to be limited to under 10 carries because it's a stupid spring game. And both of those guys, you know, have been in the system. You kind of know, I mean, Caleb Jackson needs the reps more than Caleb, uh, than um, Josh Williams. But uh, I, I mean, I, I would be, I would be surprised if Caleb Jackson gets a ton of carries. That being said, in his limited action, don't, don't be surprised if Caleb Jackson just eats this defense alive for, you know, for five carries or whatever he gets. I think they're going to lean heavy on the walk-ons in this game. Did, were you surprised when Brian Kelly said they weren't going to look uh, for a running back in the portal, so the only position they're looking at is defensive tackle? Um. Well, number one, the way that question was asked, uh, it's kind of open-ended where the coach has to, like, actively be thinking of something uh, to give a good answer. So, like, you know, do I think that he actually went down his chart of players he's keeping an eye on? Uh, he, he might have just simply, you know, not thought about running back at that moment. But um, I think that shows that they do have confidence, that they do eventually expect Trey Holiday to be a part of this team. I think that that more so than any of his direct comments addressing the Trey Holiday situation is revealing to me. Um, secondly, uh, yeah, if they have those four guys, you know, because um, you're also bringing in Caden Durham from Duncanville High School. Yeah, you're in a pretty good spot with, you know, one veteran back and three guys who are have very talented that you feel really good about your future there. So I think you would be fine. But uh, if Trey Holly is not a part of the team, uh, I think you've got to pull at least a warm body in to, to come and play some running back for you. Because, I mean, in practice, from what I've seen, once your first two guys are done running, there has been a substantial drop off in productivity from you know the two scholarship guys and the walk on guys. So I don't think you'd feel good about rolling any of those walk ons to get carries. I think you're you're honestly in a position where you're probably swapping a running back, or, I'm sorry, a receiver to running back, if if you lose guys at this point. So um, I, I I I hear what he's saying about not looking at a transfer portal. I think that that's very much so contingent on Trey Holly getting cleared and if Trey Holly's not cleared I don't believe him anymore yeah I mean my point was like it's really hard to find an SEC caliber defensive tackle just on a whim you can find a 5'11 220 pound guy to run the football a little bit if in a in a pinch um pretty yeah. quickly I, I would think yeah I mean if we're just talking about a serviceable bubble you know good bat especially running behind a really good offensive line 
yeah, you you can find a guy to to take care of that, but I don't necessarily. I I don't think you could do that the same at defensive tackle. Those guys are are tough to find. Uh, the, the other thing about running back is it's not like it's typically not a position that will really mess up other guys. Um, you know, like your offensive line. If if you don't have an offensive lineman that can block, you can't pass the football. You can't run the football. It just impacts so many different people. Running back. You, you you get the ball and and you go make a play or you don't. It doesn't really impact the re- the way your offense functions. You know. Yeah, no question, uh, no question about that. All right, we'll see you up at uh, Tiger Stadium tomorrow, Preston. Thanks, man. All right, see you there. He's Preston Guy, TigerBait.com. They'll have full coverage of the LSU spring game uh, over there at TigerBait.com. Preston, Mike, and the gang do an awesome job. We appreciate Preston for jumping on each and every Friday. Our Friday shows are brought to you by Corks. Be back with Krista Mui talking baseball on the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. One Bath and Closets. OneBathandCloSets.com is the website. David Duvall and his team, 30 years redesigning and remodeling bathrooms and closets. Look, a new closet can be a game changer. My wife and I in our previous house had a terrible closet situation. Just awful. Uh, and it was a priority when we moved to find something that was far better. And we did. Uh, and it's made a huge, huge difference. No longer am I stuffing things where they don't fit and suitcases everywhere and trying to find another pair of shoes. Like we got a little more room and it's made a ton of difference. But we had to move to do that. You don't. One bath and closets can come out and customize a closet to your exact specifications. It starts with a questionnaire. What do you have? What do you need? They'll toss some ideas at you, and then they'll create something that is customized to you that is perfectly functional and aesthetically pleasing as well. Make that phone call to David Duvall or check him out online at onebathandclosets.com. You can request the consultation right there. See some awesome testimonials from their satisfied customers. I cannot recommend David and his team enough. It is One Bath and Closets, and you can find them at onebathandclosets.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Elevate brand visibility, ignite customer engagement with the power of radio and digital advertising combined. Guarantee Digital Media brings the two together as a trusted media partner in Louisiana for nearly a century. Claim your free digital audit at GuaranteeMedia.com. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne 
began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here. On Mondays, OTB, did the Pelicans manage to get it done against the Warriors? Plus, how did LSU baseball fare in their trip to Knoxville? Give you our biggest takeaways from the LSU spring game and a brand new edition of Weekend Winners. Off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Talk some more LSU spring game coming up in our number two. We'll also talk some more LSU Tennessee with Ben McKee of Go Vols 24-7 in our number two. And we'll also do that right now with Chris Tamui, former Tiger left-hander national champion, with us every Friday on the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Tamui, how are you? Doing good, Hunt. How are you doing, buddy? Doing quite well. We'll see how I'm doing uh, as of Sunday when this three-game <laughs> series is wrapped up. LSU's... Up against it, uh, how big is this series? I think it's big. You know, it's. Uh, I'm actually here. I'm on a school tour ah. at the University of Tennessee and their student union right now walking around. Um, so I'll be here to see Friday and Saturday. But I think it's, um, look, this marks the halfway point in the season. You got three wins. <laughs> I would love to be able to get to five and ten. I just, it's going to be an uphill battle. But I think uh, hopefully some success they had in the midweek can roll over. But Look, this is going to be a tough place to play. I think LSU's taken the last four out of five against Tennessee, including two last year in the College World Series. So this place is going to be raucous, and Tennessee is actually absolutely murdering the ball right now. So um, it's going to be interesting. You know, it's, it's, it's a tough hill to climb. I got a text from Chris Blair, who is obviously in Knoxville, and I was going to ask Ben McKee in the next hour, but I didn't know you were there. He said the wind was blowing 40 miles an hour earlier today. Can you confirm that? I can confirm that it is windy and it is cold. So the sun okay. is... It's been raining. We just got here about an hour ago. It's been raining um, kind of off and on, uh, but it's, it, it's cold. Like, it's going to be upper 50s. So, harkens back to February in Baton Rouge, per se, but tomorrow is supposed to be beautiful, but it is. I haven't been to the field, so I don't know which way the wind is blowing, but I can't confirm it is cold and windy here. Your thoughts on Jay's decision to go gauge jump, Luke Coleman, TBA on this uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? I like it. I think, um, and people may think I'm crazy for it, but to me, that means maybe you're looking at starting another left-handed pitcher on on uh, game three. Maybe we get a chance to see Herring, or obviously Eichenhausen did great against these guys last year in the College World Series. I would love to see Herring. I know you may be uh, blowing your best reliever to date, but I think he gives you the best chance to win a game three. So if he's going to start another lefty, I think it's only right that he splits the lefties up. Just because a lot of their, their their pitch repertoires are so similar, you know, and I think um, Holman matches up good with Beam, who's not having a great year, and LSU's seen him several times. But uh, I like it, you know. Uh, I'm I'm all for it. Hopefully, it'll work out, you know. So I'm curious because you played obviously in an era with electric bats, um, and the the balls flying in this era, and this is a tiny ballpark, and Tennessee hits a ton of home runs. Your mentality as a pitcher, you go out there. I mean. <laughs> Do you kind of have to understand that potentially, you know, they may get one out of the yard on you, but you just got to go get the next guy? I mean, is it a different mentality in that ballpark against this team? Yeah, I 100% agree. I think you got to realize that your room for error and the ability to have innings mushroom on you is greater in this ballpark. Yeah, I mean, it's an absolute bandbox here, and these guys are strong, and they hit a ton of home runs. Therefore, you know, your ability to make mistakes is limited, but you can't. You know, you can't kick a ball, you can't have a walk, and all of a sudden Blake Burke comes up and you hit the three-run bomb, you know, out to the railroad yard in right center. I mean, that's, that's the thing. They, get, they just got to cut down on the mistakes to where if you give up a home run, hopefully it's a solo home run, and you just stay out of those big, big innings to where they have to play clean baseball, which has been tough as of late. And like we've talked about even last week, minimizing the walks, especially at a ballpark like this, and these guys score in bunches and score double-digit runs like it's nothing. It's it's really paramount to success this weekend. Who do you trust to get outs out of the bullpen when the starters are done? Besides Herring, obviously. Uh, Ackenhausen, even though he, he didn't throw great last weekend, I st- I'll still trust Ackenhausen a lot. And I think it, it's come to the point in the season where 
and I don't know their hesitation around it. Maybe some games have gotten out of hand, but Gavin Gidry, is, is he, he's got to throw twice in a weekend for me, right? If you don't have a lot of guys down there that you can trust or, or haven't been throwing great, you got to throw him at, at, twice. You got to throw him back to back. If you keep him under 30 pitches, I'm sure he can do that. Maybe you can throw Ackenhausen twice, but you got to start using the guys you trust more frequently because. I don't know how many more chances other guys are going to get to where they show where they can't necessarily get the job done, even in small doses. So it's Ackenhausen, it's Gidry, um, and Herring. And, and besides that, I would love to say Thatcher Hurd. I just just haven't seen it this year. We've talked about him the whole year, you know, and it's um, – I don't know if this is a great place to get your stuff right, right, against this lineup and against this ballpark, but I would love to be able to say him, you know. I mean, that, it's, it's very limited for me right now. I mean, it's you know guys like Javen Coleman and Justin Lore and uh, Christian Little. Those guys are have been around the block a few times. They're they're older guys, and then you've got the uber talent and Cam Johnson and and Aiden Moffitt. I mean, where do you stand on any of those guys? Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Question mark. I mean, it's probably the same place you stand. It's it's they do it in spurts, but it's it's you know this is and you know this. You've been following baseball long enough. It's great to do it once. But you got to be able to do it again, and you got to be able to do it again. Then, if you have a hiccup, that's fine. But you got to be able to do it after that, right? It's, it's just some type of consistency because in the SEC, everybody's going to get hit. But can you come out the next outing and, and get six outs, right? And I just, you just haven't seen it from those guys you mentioned in the in freshman or freshman, and it's it's tough to you know you'd like to, for them to have a training rule period, and it's just tough. And and what you're seeing right now in terms of the teams you're facing to throw them out there against the wolves a little bit. Even though they're uber talented and they have a ton of potential, that doesn't always translate to success on the field. But yes, I would have expected um, Lower and Javen Coleman. You know, he's—I st- I still think he's limited from a pitch perspective. You can only get about 30 or 40 pitches out of him, really, and you've seen that in his starts. But uh, I would have hoped some of the older guys would have provided a little bit more stability in that pen as now. What do you think about Jared Jones in the leadoff spot on Tuesday? I thought Jay was absolutely crazy. But then. Uh, <laughs> I saw the lineup come out, and I'm like, well, I guess he's just saying, hey, we'll roll it out there and see if this works, guys, because I have no idea at this point. And halfway through the game, I'm like, all right, I'm an idiot. You know, he proved everybody wrong, but I think he may have had that concept, too, to be like, why not, right? Like, you can't pitch around him because you got Tommy White. But, I mean, Jared Jones, is, I wouldn't be surprised to see him at he – I wouldn't be surprised to see him at hit, like, three out this weekend at this park. Hopefully White can get a couple, but – yeah, I was shocked. I, hey, it worked out. I don't know if you'll see that tonight, but uh, I don't know where he's going with the lineup anymore in terms of um, who bats where. I think he has an idea, though, of who, who's playing. I just don't think he has an idea of what order to put them in. I think most expect Braswell back in the lineup tonight, maybe a day to clear his head on Tuesday. Is that where you are? I like it, yeah. There's nothing wrong with giving a veteran guy like that a, um, a break in the midweek you know, against a not great McNeese State team and a chance to give the freshman um, Kucherak a chance to run out there. He, he didn't have a great game, unfortunately. But uh, at least you show guys that you recruited, like, hey, I'm willing to put you out there. I want to give you chances maybe more than I've given you to start the year. But, yeah, a veteran like Braswell, I'm sure they had to talk, like, look, just relax. You know, it'll be fine. Just take your hacks in the cages, put your turfs on, and uh, we'll be good to go for the weekend. As far as the young guys, uh, Milam, Brown, um, even uh, Ashton Larson, uh, who do you trust on a weekend on the road uh, against a, a kind of a subpar pitching staff? All three. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel. I feel like I, I real. I really like Larson the way he's come about as of late. I know he still strikes out a little bit, uh, maybe too much, or his stats say that. But man, um, I just like his look. He's physically mature, right? When you, I saw him in the fall, and you see him now, he doesn't look like a freshman at the plate. I like his approach, the way he's handled things. Um, I've liked Milam even through his ups and downs. Um, this year, he still proves he can handle the bat. And I think Brown, look, he's a Louisiana kid. He was highly recruited. You know, um, I would love to see him on the mound. Obviously, we're not going to get a chance to see that this year. But um, I like him, too. I think he knows he knows what it means. Kind of like Gavin Gidgey, right? They're from the Sulphur area, Lake Charles area. They know what it means to wear those three letters across their chest. And I think Brown just embraces that. So I trust all three of those guys moving forward. Even through the ups and downs, I think next year, those guys are going to be massive. Calhoun's on the river. Great spot to find a cold one and some food for you uh, watch a little baseball. That's my rec. That's what I need there. See, that's what I'm looking for. And I will <laughs> tell you, I'm outside now, and uh, it is sunny. It's still cool, but it, it, it's sunny. So the clouds have moved away. I think tomorrow it's supposed to be in the 70s. But uh, 
hopefully I'll shoot you some good texts tonight and um you know the the Tigers can find a way to to get a dub in this um it's going to be a tough environment you know they're going to be on their head but that's that's what you live for on the road to play with your brothers you know hopefully they can turn around we sent you up there for a reason get us a couple of wins and come on back all right <laughs> there we go hon. that's what i like to hear that's chris <laughs> demui appreciate some time in uh, in knoxville tennessee lsu and the balls game one tonight uh from rocky top lindsey nelson stadium up there on the campus of the university of tennessee our friday show is brought to you by corks cajun fried fish and shrimp we'll step aside close out our number one kentucky made a basketball hire and i gotta talk about that it's next you are now listening to the hunt palmer show Platinum Window Tint. Platinum Window Tint LLC.com is the website. We've all done this a bajillion times. Your car's outside all day. It's August. You walk out and you get in, and it's just like you walked into an oven. It's really uncomfortable. Your steering wheel's hot. You can't touch it. It's just awful. It happens all the time. You can't prevent it completely, but you can help with some tinting on your windows. Platinum Window Tint llc.com is the website where platinum window temp can come out and tint the windows of your automobile to keep yourself a little bit cool give yourself a fighting chance down here in the heat it's coming it's april right now and it's gorgeous outside i wore a jacket to work but we know it's just a matter of a couple of weeks and it'll be a pressure cooker inside that car platinum window tent is happy to help you out go to the website Request uh, that quote right there at the top of the screen. You can see pictures of their great services as well. It's Platinum Window Tent. You can find them online at PlatinumWindowTentLLC.com. Our listeners fire off their opinions on the JimsFirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the JimsFirearms.net hotline on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. When it comes to ending cancer, we push forward, always working together for you. That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center. Long live you. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard. Our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles. 
Charles Sandigraf joining us for the Monday edition of Live at Lunch from the Queen Casino, downtown Baton Rouge. We'll take a look back at the Masters and LSU's three-game set with Tennessee. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Monday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Shout out to Corks for bringing you our Friday shows each and every week. Awesome, awesome fried catfish and fried shrimp over there at Corks. Also have great snacks you can grab. they got Cajun Fish Bites, uh, 12 piece for just $8.99. Um, if you want some fries with that, it's $10.99 for just little bits of catfish. They can also do some saucy shrimp. Get those 10 Jumbo Gulf Shrimp. Tossed in your favorite sauce, whether that's spicy barbecue sauce, you can get that in their cork sauce, you can get a side of tartar sauce with that as well. Uh, awesome, awesome stuff over there. If you're looking to uh, feed the office, feed a party, uh, tailgate out at the box coming up in a couple of weeks, Cork's always happy to help you that uh, as well. Check them out online, corksfishandshrimp.com, corksfishandshrimp.com. Kentucky made a hire yesterday, uh, and it shocked me. I did not think Kentucky would hire somebody I had never heard of. Like, that was not on my radar. Uh, I feel like I've got a reasonable handle, not an expert handle, but a reasonable handle on the landscape of college basketball. I did not know that Mark Pope was the head coach at BYU. And I think the lesson to be learned here with this hire is that no matter who you are, because there is no job in collegiate athletics better than Kentucky basketball. Alabama football, Ohio State football, LSU football, awesome. LSU baseball, great job. UConn's women's basketball, incredible job. But Kentucky basketball is as good a job with as much resources and passion and tradition and money as any job in the country. And they asked Nate Oates, and he said no. And they asked Scott Drew, and he said no. And they asked Dan Hurley, and he said no. And I don't know if they talked to Billy Donovan or not, but they didn't hire him. They got down on their list to Mark Pope. Mark Pope, in his head coaching career, has gone 187 and 108. That is a 63% win percentage at Utah Valley and BYU. Now, all his seasons at BYU were fine. 24 and 8, 20 and 7, made it to the NCAA tournament that year, 24 and 11, 19 and 15. That wasn't great. And this past year, 23 and 11 and got to the NCAA tournament. But there's no proven track record here. And the more of this story is that it's not just the top jobs in any sport that are paying a lot of money. Everyone is. And you can be more comfortable making your money and doing your job at Baylor coaching basketball or Alabama coaching basketball than you can at Kentucky. Now, you're always going to have the dream chasers that want to take that challenge. I mentioned yesterday, Jay Johnson's one of those. He was well-paid at Arizona. He was winning at Arizona. He'd been to College World Series twice. LSU called. He said, you know what? I'm going. And Kalen DeBoer just did that. And it happens. Brian Kelly did that. And there's money involved in that too, but there was big money at Kentucky. Mark Pope has no track record of recruiting at the level that Kentucky needs him to recruit at. You don't recruit the same guys to Utah Valley at BYU as you do at Kentucky. But recruiting's changed. What he was recruiting at Utah Valley in 15, 16, 17, 18, that's doing it the old-fashioned way. Now you get the horse racing guys and the bourbon guys to come up with the money, and then you present it that way. And if he can do that, and get the lottery picks, and then he can coach them better than John Calipari could, which I don't think was great, then it might work. But it's still shocking to me that Kentucky had to hire Mark Pope. Like, there are five coaches in the SEC I'd much rather have. Much rather have Rick Barnes, much rather have Nate Oates, much rather have Bruce Pearl. Those for sure. I could look around and Maybe find a couple more. That I mean, I'd rather have... I, I can't believe they at least didn't call Chris Beard. I'd call Brad Underwood at Illinois, who was great at Stephen F. Austin and good at Oklahoma State and has been great at Illinois. 
before I called Mark Pope. I know he went to Kentucky. I know he was on the best team I've ever had. But I just, this is puzzling. And Charles Hanegraaff mentioned this, and it was something I was going to talk about as well. Like, Louisville's job came open, and they hired somebody you never heard of. And Kentucky's job came open, and they hired somebody you never heard of. And Villanova's job came open, and they hired somebody you never heard of. And Duke and North Carolina came open, and they hired the guy on the end of the bench. I mean, UCLA took a pretty big swing. Mick Cronin is, is, was a big hire. But I think the days of flexing your financial muscles may be over. And that's where I got to hold my hand up. And I go, I was approaching this Kentucky thing all wrong last week when I said, this is fantastic. They can do great things. Go get Dan Hurley. Go get Nate Oates. Go get Bruce Pearl. And they didn't do any of that. Was it for lack of trying or because it's not possible? I, I don't know. But we'll see what Mark Pope does. I know I'm not terrified. I'm an SEC basketball coach at what's going on at Kentucky. That's it for hour number one. We'll come back. We've got one more hour left to go in the week. We'll talk some LSU football spring game and Saints when we come back. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana the local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Rec teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Rec, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. 
So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. I'm Kevin Winter, round number one of the Masters finished up earlier this morning. Now we play in round two with coverage beginning on ESPN. Bryson DeChambeau continues to lead at seven under par, but right now he has company. Scotty Scheffler birdieing the second hole in round two. He also sits seven under par. Max Homa is third at six under. Danny Willits, after a birdie on ten, is moved to five under par. Two shots off the pace. Tiger Woods finished up round one this morning with a one over par, 73. And right now, Tiger, after a bogey on 14, he is two over par. The projected cut is plus four. Tiger trying to make a cut at Augusta for the 24th consecutive time, which would set a new record. Again, coverage beginning on ESPN2 in round two of the ESPN Masters coverage on ESPN television. Kentucky makes it official. They name BYU's Mark Pope as their new head coach. He was the captain of the Wildcats 1996 national championship team. Also from college basketball, Duke sophomore All-American Kyle Filipowski and all-conference freshman Jared McCain have each announced today they're entering the upcoming NBA draft. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Cannon. Coming up Monday, I'll tell you the worst landing spot for all the top quarterback prospects in the NFL draft. It's on Sportsman like 6 a.m. Eastern right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. The Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Brought to you by Cork's Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios, this is Hunt Palmer. Hour number two, Hunt Palmer Show, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. We're brought to you by Cork's Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp on this gorgeous Friday. downtown from about five o'clock to eight o'clock and we listen to some tunes getting something to drink something to eat enjoying the great weather and the start to the weekend i'll be kind of hosting live after five it's not a very intensive uh job i read a couple lines off some paper and then head on back and listen to some music so very much looking forward to that uh quite frankly uh, over the last uh, hour and change of live after five i'll probably be looking at my phone watching lsu baseball as they get ready to play tennessee we'll talk about lsu and tennessee in about 30 minutes with ben mckee from go balls 24 7 covers tennessee baseball we talked to him uh, when we were up in omaha last year a couple times and uh, certainly when the balls came to the box last year so looking forward to reconnecting with ben Talk about a really, really good Tennessee offense. We talked with Chris Mui back in the first uh, hour talking at LSU, and uh, we'll talk about things from the Vols' perspective here coming up. I uh, do want to spend some time on the New Orleans Saints today as they have made a couple of uh, roster moves, a couple of signings for New Orleans today. Um, and I think you've probably heard of both of the players that they have signed uh, for different reasons. Uh, the first is at quarterback, which is always interesting. Um, how impactful is this signing going to be? Time will tell. But the Saints have inked Kellen Mond to a, a deal. And Kellen Mond is obviously someone that we're very familiar with in this part of the world because he was a quarterback at Texas A&M for four years as a starter. And he finished up in 2020 on that team that went to the Orange Bowl and narrowly missed the college football playoff. Uh, Beck, I will ask you this trivia question. I have not prepped you for this, and that's probably part of the reason I was going to ask it. Okay. Um, Kellen Mond is one of three quarterbacks in the history of of the Southeastern Conference to throw for 9,000 yards and run for 1,500. Would you like to venture a guess at the other two that have done it? Cam Newton and Tim Tebow. Cam Newton was only there for one year, so was not going to throw oh, for 9,000 yeah. yards. Tim Tebow is correct. Yeah. I'll give you a mulligan on, okay, on Cam yeah, Newton. I just immediately You're going to have to think about somebody that played for a while. Yeah, that's a good point. Ooh. Um, how about, uh, no. Um, SEC West. Uh, oh, okay. Hmm. Mm. Nothing. I don't. Ah. It's on the spot. We know. Yeah, it can yeah. be tough. Don't have anything. Sorry. Louisiana sorry. native. SEC West. 
Dak Prescott? That is Dak Prescott. Wow. Dak Prescott, Tim Tebow, and Kellen Mond, the only three quarterbacks in SEC history to throw for 9,000 and run for 1,500. Um, Kellen Mond uh, spent his first couple of years in the NFL with the Vikings, was kind of up and down. Kirk Cousins got COVID. They activated him. He ended up throwing three passes in a game as the backup. But he's been to Cleveland, been with the Colts, um, was just a practice squad member there. And New Orleans has signed him to a deal. I find myself, I don't know how you, Joe Saints fan, is looking at the Saints quarterback situation, but I find myself kind of passively looking at who might be next. It's why we've entertained the thought process of the Saints taking a flyer on Jordan Travis in the fifth round. Because maybe you strike gold with your Dak Prescott, with your Brock Purdy. Maybe. Maybe not, but maybe. Because I don't think there are a lot of people, maybe some, and that's fine, but I don't think there's a lot of people that think the Saints have the next, the, the, the current quarterback. I don't think the Saints currently have the quarterback who is on the next really good Saints team. I don't know that that's Derek Carr. It could be somebody they take in the draft. I don't think it's Kellen Mond either. This is a guy who's been in the NFL now since 2021. We're here in 2024, and he's played in exactly one game, and he was only active that day because the starting quarterback had COVID-19. It's fine to bring him in. It's fine to create some competition for your backup quarterback spot to push Jake Hayner. But I don't think this is going to be an impactful move on the Saints organization. That probably goes without saying, but quarterback always gets a little more reaction than any other position on the field. And when you had Drew Brees, who cares who you bring in at quarterback? It doesn't really matter. When you have Derek Carr and he's only got two years left on his deal, it's reasonable to think, well, can we stash somebody like Jordan Love? Like, is that doable? Mahomes didn't start his first year. Are we, are we close to trying to find the next guy? But Kellen Mond does not fit that. Kellen Mond comes in to, uh, to participate as potentially your backup quarterback. The Saints have gone high profile with backup quarterbacks over the last few years. Teddy Bridgewater, pretty high profile. He's a former first-round pick. Andy Dalton, pretty high profile. It's a guy who started playoff games. Jameis Winston was a former number one pick in the draft. And it looks like the Saints have moved off of that. They're going to use those resources elsewhere, and they're going to bring in Jay Kaner in the late rounds of the draft and then go sign Kellen Mond. I'm fine with it, but it's not going to be impactful, I don't think, on the Saints organization. Another sign, though, today that it could be impactful on this current Saints team is Equiminius St. Brown. Of course, his younger brother, Amon Ra, a star up in Detroit. Equimini St. Brown has never been a star in the NFL, but he does bring the Saints a quality they don't necessarily have. Michael Thomas was this, but he moved on, obviously. Equimini St. Brown is six foot five, 215 pounds. Chris Olave is not that. Rashid Shahid is not that. Even A.T. Perry is not that type of receiver. He's more of a, a speed, big play guy. Equimini St. Brown, I think, will make this team and impact this team as a big-body wide receiver. They didn't use Jimmy Graham a lot last year. He had a couple of big plays that brought back some memories, but wasn't a huge part of things. Foster Morrow, not a huge piece to the passing game. I like having wide receivers with some different skill sets, with some different traits. It forces the defense to react a few different ways and gives you a little bit more options. You don't want all your wide receivers to be 6'1", 205 with great speed. It's good to have a couple of those guys. I don't want to get rid of Rashid Shahid. I love Chris Olave. But Equimini St. Brown gives you another different option. He hasn't been a huge play guy. He was a six-round pick from the Packers in 2018. He played in Green Bay for three years. In his best year was his rookie year. He caught 21 balls. And then his first year in Chicago, a few years later, and not exactly great quarterback play up there in Chicago, he caught 21 more. Last year, only five catches in seven games. So again, this is not like bringing in somebody that I think can make the Pro Bowl. But I do think he can make the team. And I think he's a different type of dude on the outside. We know that it was very likely that the Saints are going to add to the wide receiver position in the draft. I don't think it's in the first round. But they're going to do that at some point. This is a little insurance for that. Bring in a guy in the fifth round that uh, we thought we had something, but it turns out in camp, maybe not. Here's your insurance policy. This guy can play in the NFL. Is he going to catch 87 balls for 1,200 yards? He's not. Can he come in there and and play in, on third downs 
Can he be a little bit of a mismatch in the red zone on some smaller safeties? He can. Alave, Shahid, A.T. Perry, those guys, those guys are the guys that you're going to count on the most. But I like this signing of Equimene St. Brown. And what have I said every time the Saints have brought someone in in this offseason? Same song, different verse. One-year deal. Don't do anything in this spring that compromises the 2025 Saints, the 2026 Saints, the 2027 Saints. Nothing. This doesn't. This could help 2024. It's very, very cheap. It's not going to hinder you from doing anything else. And you're not putting yourself in a position to kick money down the road like the Saints have done over and over again. There's been a little bit of a different approach here. I'm not suggesting the Saints have never signed guys to one-year deals. Of course, they do that every single year. But they also have a tendency to sign guys to three-year deals that probably don't merit it. And it gives them that flexibility to move money around and do this whole thing. Stop it. This has nothing to do with that. So for me, two signings today, Kellen Mond and Equimania St. Brown. Mond, it's interesting because he was a Southeastern Conference quarterback and we know him down in this market, but it's it's a camp arm. Equimania St. Brown, there's a chance. There's some upside there. It's a 28-year-old wide receiver who can help you. But if he doesn't, or you draft someone that's better, no harm done. So I like these moves uh, for New Orleans. Nothing that's crazy, but that's a good thing. Keep it simple over there in New Orleans. Our Friday show is brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Check out that menu, CorksFishAndShrimp.com. CorksFishAndShrimp.com. We come back. What am I looking for in the uh, spring game tomorrow inside Tiger Stadium? We'll give you my thoughts on that. Ben McKee talking Vols coming up at 2.30. Hope you're enjoying this lovely Friday. It's the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Visit us at LaBear's Baton Rouge Casino this spring for all the hoops and hockey playoff action. We got the biggest screens, the best food and drink, plus giving away pin cash bonuses and prizes to pin play rewards members. You're not a member? Join today by downloading and registering for the pin play app from the App Store. Unlock all the fun, including a chance to win up to $2,000 in pin cash. 2K, that's no joke. All this and more. Make LaBear's Baton Rouge Casino your spring sports viewing headquarters. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. And looking forward to 50 more. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. 
www.thepetshow.com. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Moscona inviting you to join us for Friday's AFR, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Preview in LSU, Tennessee, the Tigers' spring game. We'll recap Pell's Kings. Join us Friday's AFR 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. ESPN Baton Rouge and the Baton Rouge Clinic bring you the Dreams Come True Radiothon. Dreams Come True is an organization designed to help grant dreams for children with life-threatening illnesses and their families. The Dreams Come True Radiothon is presented today by Service Chevrolet, Lewis Mechanical, and the Lucky Law Firm. Donate today at 1045ESPN.com. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. LSU spring game tomorrow inside Tiger Stadium. I, I was on the fence about whether or, or not to go. Um, weather's going to be really good. Masters going to be on. But I'm going to go. I like to get inside Tiger Stadium in the springtime. A little low-stress football watching. I'm going to bring the laptop, sit in the press box, and I'll have the Masters ready to rock there. But I'm going to go and check it out. And I think, I think everybody's pretty much on the same page with the spring game. Even the most die hard of LSU fans realizes that this is just practice. Like this is practice. You're not going to see any real creativity from the offense or defense. You can't figure out if your quarterback's good or not in the spring game. You're not going to find some diamond in the rough out there. Somebody's going to make a big play here or there. It doesn't necessarily translate to the fall. I think it's interesting to see where guys line up, who's running first team, who's running second team, and to see some guys do some stuff that's really athletic. Like, that's kind of my thought on it. I mean, the 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 guy who made the most plays in the spring game, anyone I can ever remember, is Richard Murphy. That guy was running all over Tiger Stadium for like three years in spring games. And he was usually the third team running back. Like, that's that's kind of where things are. But I uh, there are a few things that I'll be looking for, and I wanted to lay those out here um, before they get out on the field inside Tiger Stadium tomorrow. Um I would love to see Deshaun Womack do some things that maybe go, oh. Now, I don't think he's going to be lined up across from Will Campbell and or Emory Jones very often. I don't think those two guys are going to play very much. Brian, that makes a lot of sense, just something that's easy to say. But Brian Kelly also alluded to that earlier this week. He's like, we're going to get some younger guys out there pretty quickly. There are some guys that are a little bit older that may not get as many reps. Well, Will Campbell and Emory Jones come first to mind there. You're talking about offensive linemen, who have been with Brad Davis for a couple of years, who have been with Joe Sloan for a couple of years, who have started in the SEC, and quite frankly, there's no real benefit to them being out there a ton. So I want to see Deshaun Womack beat some people off the edge, get back there and make some things happen. My opinion on this LSU defense is that their best chance for success is is not going to be being a consistently dominant defense. I, I, I just don't see that with the personnel. What I can see is an aggressive defense that at times makes some big plays and stops some drives because they're athletic and they do something that puts the other team behind the chains. And Deshaun Womack is one of those guys. If it's third and six and you get back there and get a sack, your suspect... Secondary doesn't have to cover. And you're not going to see any blitzing really tomorrow, I don't think. So let's see some stuff off the edge. Savion Jones, Deshaun Womack, those guys, I'd love to see some edge pressure from LSU's defensive 
line because most of the day, no matter if it's the ones or twos out there, is going to be a lot of one-on-one and four-man rush and potentially a little bit of five-man rush. You're not going to see LSU bring seven at any point. So I'd love to see a little bit of that. I'd love to see a backup tackle. Maybe that's Tyree Adams who goes out there and plays a little bit. We chatted earlier with Preston Guy, and he said that that Bo Bordelon was getting some time at offensive tackle. Um, I'm excited about the future of the offensive line, even if after this coming season, Will Campbell and Emory Jones are not a part of that because they've done such a good job at, at recruiting offensive linemen, and I trust Brad Davis to develop those linemen. I'll be watching some of those guys. Now, I realize the two things that I just let off with are contradictory because if Deshaun Womack is winning, then the tackle they put out there is losing, and vice versa. If I don't see anything from Womack, the tackle is out there and winning. But these are some young guys that I'm excited to see in the program. Like, I don't need to see Kyron Lacey go nuts tomorrow. Josh Williams ripping off a 55-yard touchdown run doesn't really tell me much. I know what those two guys are. Major Burns with a big-time pick. I, you know, I, I've seen Major Burns. I know what he can do. I'm looking at some young guys to potentially make an impact. Now, I made the case back in hour number one with Preston that I thought that Caleb Jackson was a good bet at most outstanding player of the spring game because we know that LSU's offensive line is very good and that it has dominated the defensive line thus far in the spring. And I thought that because you don't have a lot of numbers at running back, that Caleb Jackson was the most likely guy to bust out a 65-yard touchdown run. Maybe score three times. Preston pushed back and said, uh, they don't really have any numbers at running back, so given one of your star running backs 16 carries in the spring game, probably doesn't make a lot of sense, which is probably right. You'll probably see more carries by walk-on running backs than you do Caleb Jackson. But I have been since this time, well, not this time last year, since the fall of last year, enthralled with the talent of Caleb Jackson. I just think that's a guy that looks the part and is going to play the part quickly of the next really, really good LSU running back. And while I guess selfishly I'd like to see him make some real big plays tomorrow, you probably got to realize that eh, may not see a ton of that because you're so thin on numbers there. If Caden Durham was here, I'd love to see him run too, but he's running track for Duncanville right now and is not going to be playing in the spring game. So those are a couple guys that I want to see. I have not heard almost anything about Kyle Parker or Shelton Sampson this spring, and that bums me out a little bit. It doesn't mean that they're not doing great. We don't get to see very much of practice, and not everybody gets asked about in press conferences. But we hear a lot about Kyron Lacey, and you know the two transfers they brought in, and Xavier Thomas and C.J. Daniels are going to play, and we have heard a lot about Chris Hilton, and I feel like he's primed to, to be making some big plays, and I just haven't heard a lot about the, the second-year players which is Shelton Sampson and Kyle Parker. They're very different guys. Shelton Sampson is in the body type of Terrace Marshall. He's 6'3", he jumps well, um, he's a really good athlete, and I haven't seen a lot of him. And Kyle Parker is a little bit more compact. He's a great technician. You see a lot of times on Instagram him working on his, his route running, and he was a really productive player in Texas high school. But we haven't heard a lot from them. Like All I've seen from Shelton Sampson, basically, in a year on campus is him dropping a couple of balls against Grambling last year. Like, it just haven't seen a lot more. And so it stands to reason that he'll get, that both of those guys will get a lot of playing time tomorrow. I'm not saying I want you to prove that you need to be the starter. I'm saying I'd like to see him do something really athletic, really cool. Go up and make a play in the end zone. Outrun somebody to the boundary for a 65-yard touchdown. There's a lot of talent there, and there are a lot of, available reception yards because of the departure of Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas, I'd like to see one of those two guys make some plays. We know that they came in with you know, a star-studded high school receiving class that included Jalen Brown, who's now at Florida State. Maybe see a little bit of those guys. And then the position that we've talked about a ton is, of course, tight end. I, I've talked about that a lot. Um, I think that those guys are going to be featured tomorrow. And I think it's going to be a lot of Mac Markway. I think it's going to be a lot of Camorian Pimpton. Mason Taylor fits in the category with Will Campbell and Emory Jones. We know, have a seat. The other two guys, it's time to maybe use those guys a little bit more. 
I'm excited to see them. I'll finish with Garrett Nussmeyer. Quarterback is always the most talked about position on the field, and certainly in spring games where your uh, your quarterback is departing, that's going to be brought up a lot. I expect Garrett Nussmeyer to take a lot of chances tomorrow when he's out there because it's no risk. There's no downside in throwing an interception. Let's see if some of your wide receivers are ready to go up there and make some plays. Like I think you're going to see the ball pushed down the field by Garrett Nussmeyer by design tomorrow. This is based on absolutely zero inside information. It's just a hunch. I think Brian Kelly knows a lot about Garrett Nussmeyer. I think Joe Sloan knows a lot about Garrett Nussmeyer. I think they're comfortable with the quarterback that he is now going into his fourth year in the program. I think they saw enough in the bowl game and what they've seen in practice to be like, okay, this is a guy we trust to go out there and play. I think they would like to learn a little bit more about their wide receivers. And they've had all spring to do that, and they'll have all fall camp to do that as well in far more reps than just a little condensed spring game that just happens to have an attendance figure attached to it. But it is inside Tiger Stadium, and guys should be a little bit more fired up to play. And so I think that you're going to see some shots taken down the field and see if some guys can go up there and make some plays. And it's it's twofold. One, you can see if your wide receivers are ready to go out there and, and do it. And two, the DBs need some work too. So I, I think that the LSU team in 2024 is going to do a lot of running the football and, and lean on that a good bit, I think. I don't think they're going to do that a ton tomorrow because you don't have a ton of running backs and you are not going to be using your stalwart offensive lineman for a lot. Let's get some look on the outside. Let's throw the football around a little bit. Take some vertical shots. See if P.J. Woodland's ready to go. See if he's ready to man up Kyron Lacey. See if J.V. and Toviano can hold his own against a proven SEC commodity in Xavier Thomas. Like, I think that's fun. And they've been doing it for six weeks, so it's not new information to them. It'd be new to us. But I think that'd be interesting to watch. So uh, I am going to go to the spring game tomorrow. Uh, looking forward to getting in there and checking it out for a little bit. I uh, hope you are as well, and we'll certainly be reacting to it uh, coming up on Monday's show. Still plenty to get to over the next half an hour here on a Friday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show. It's presented by Corks. Uh, hope your Friday is going awesome. Hope your work week is winding down. Get you some scores from the Masters coming up a little bit later. But we'll first, we'll stop into Knoxville, Tennessee, I guess for the second time unintentionally because Demui was up there in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll chat with Ben McKee of Go Vols 24-7 coming up next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Audio, video, security, solutions. It's all right there in the name. Audio. For all your surround sound and your home audio, maybe on the back patio, maybe in the kitchen, maybe in the bathroom, they can handle that over at AVSS. Video, mounting televisions, creating that in-home viewing experience, whether it's for movies or for a game, they can handle that at Audio Video Security Solutions and Security. Nothing more important than the security of your house and your family. They helped us with that as well. Mitchell Fisher is running this Baton Rouge a locally owned company, and it is an awesome company to work with. You can get here's a cell phone. Like it's not some recorded hotline that you can call and they'll get back to you later. Like this is Mitchell's cell phone, 225-439-7920. It's 225-439-7920. If you've got some needs or some wants with your surround sound, your home entertainment system, your security system, all that can be handled by the folks at Audio Video Security Solutions. Check them out online, avssla.com. That's avssla.com. It's Audio Video Security Solutions. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans.
I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case of an after-hours emergency. On Monday's OTB, did the Pelicans manage to get it done against the Warriors? Plus, how did LSU baseball fare in their trip to Knoxville? Give you our biggest takeaways from the LSU spring game and a brand new edition of Weekend Winners. Off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Just a matter of hours for LSU and Tennessee get underway from Lindsey Nelson Stadium up in Knoxville. Ben McKee covers the Tennessee Vols for Go Vols 24-7. We'll be there tonight and joins us now on the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Ben, thanks for a little bit of time. How are you? I'm doing great. Appreciate y'all having me on. Ready for uh, what should be an exciting weekend of baseball. Yeah, it absolutely should be. I got a text from uh, Chris Blair, who's the radio voice of the Tigers, earlier this morning that said the wind was blowing like 40 miles an hour. Uh, can you confirm that at this point? Yes, I, I can. I, uh, my, I, As you were calling me, my grill fell over in my backyard <laughs> and was trying to pick it up. So uh, it, it's not ideal. Uh, storms have been kind of coming through in 15, 10, 15 minute intervals, I, I guess, every hour or so. So, uh, I, I think it is going to clear up by first pitch, though, which will be nice. It will be. I'm I'm fascinated by both manager and head coach's decisions with the starting pitching this weekend. Uh, Tony Vitello going with Chris Stamos in the TBA spot at the front. It'll be Drew Beam uh, on Saturday and Xander Seacrest coming up on Sunday. What did you make of that decision by the head vol? Well, I, I do think going with the TBA at first is, is a little gamesmanship by Tony. Uh, especially going back to last season in uh, Omaha when LSU elected to, I believe it was roll with Ackenhauser at the last minute and maybe not give a heads up. So I, I don't think that that's a coincidence, but uh, certainly a, a move that Tennessee probably needed to make regardless. Uh, A.J. Causey had been filling in for A.J. Russell in that Friday night role and uh, struggled the last two weeks against Georgia. And Auburn had only allowed, I believe it's seven runs, in his first 33 innings this season, but in his last two outings in which he only lasted three innings, allowed 15 runs on 15 hits. So uh, trying to shake it up there and, and find somebody uh, maybe with more composure on the mound, that's something that Tony has talked about this week. And uh, he's a big fan of Chris Stamos, a lefty uh, who's a graduate transfer from Cal, who's had a pretty nice season. Uh, he likes uh, hit his moxie on the mound. And uh, Tony Vitello is a big believer in, uh, having somebody with moxie and, and a lot of poise to lead you into the weekend and kind of set the tone. And in his eyes, Chris Stamos embodies that. 
Yeah, I'm looking at the numbers for Stamos. 13 innings, 4 hits, which is really good. Uh, 12 strikeouts, 8 walks. But the longest outing, only 51 pitches against Albany back in February. How many outs is he expecting Stamos to get tonight? Yeah, I think that's to be determined. I think that depends on how Stamos pitches. Uh, I could see him, uh, to your point, he has not been extended this season. Uh, so I would be surprised if uh, he went more than four or five innings. I think that would be the max. And uh, not only uh, is it fair to point out, kind of, he hasn't really pitched a ton uh, in each outing. Uh, he's also dealt with some arm soreness here and there this season, and he's a good bit removed uh, from that. But I bring that up to say that they'll probably be cautious and, and not try to uh, just push him to the max because he has dealt with that. Uh, I guess it was about a month or so ago at, at this point. So, I think it'll depend on how he performs. If he comes out and looks great in the first inning, then I, I bet they'll try to get him to the third or fourth. If it's a little touch and go, and, and obviously there's some big pats in that LSU lineup that can make it touch or go uh, there early on, then I would imagine that uh, the leash is, is much shorter. But I, I, to your point and overall question, I, I expect to see Aaron Combs, who is another reliever. Uh, he's been extended further than Stamos. Uh, he threw about 60 to 70 pitches uh, after cause he struggled in the start at Auburn last Friday. So uh, I think you'll see a mix of those three, uh, Chris Stamos, uh, Aaron Combs, and A.J. Causey. Uh, and, and they'll just kind of play it by ear and roll with the hot hand, essentially. Drew Beams coming off his best outing of the year. What was different against Auburn than some rougher outings against Georgia and Ole Miss? Yeah, pretty simple to, to me. I, I thought he pitched with more conviction. Uh, and that's something that Tony Vitello has talked about uh, as well. Uh, Drew Beam, he, he doesn't have Paul Skeen's level stuff uh, in terms of having plus-plus velocity or uh, the nasty breaking balls. Drew Beam is great because of his uh, command. Uh, good luck finding anybody with better command in college baseball than Drew Beam. That, that is why he is a potential first-round pick or will be at least an early pick in the upcoming draft is uh, because he is precise and he can paint uh, both sides of the plate, uh, both both black sides on, on the rubber there. And against Auburn, when he has run into trouble, it's been because he's, he's struggled to maintain that, that command, which is rare to see. But that secondary stuff that I, I kind of said that or referred to Paul Skeens, he, he doesn't have that level of secondary pitches. And I thought his secondary pitches were much better in that regard. The curveball had more bite. Uh, I thought he located it better. Uh, but what Tony Vitell and the staff loves most about Drew Beam is kind of that poise and walking around on the mound. And I know that's kind of been a common theme for me during this interview, but uh, that is something they truly talk about all the time with Drew Beam. He was a high school quarterback. Uh, they, they're they a big believer in, in his makeup, and that's why they put him in that game two slot to, to pitch on Saturdays. That way uh, you're either pitching for a series win or you're pitching to make sure that you avoid a series loss. And they want Drew Beam in that role because – he kind of carries himself like a quarterback should, uh, and they're a big believer in, in his personality and, and kind of leading the way for Tennessee. Yeah, I talked to them earlier in, my, in the show when looking at LSU's rotation. I think that's why they've got Luke Holman there as well. You feel a little bit better coming to the ballpark after a loss with Luke Holman on the mound if you're LSU, and certainly if you win the game, got a chance to win the series behind your ace. So it looks like kind of the similar thinking there with Tony Vitello going with Drew Beam in that spot. Um, offensively, I want to talk about the offense as a whole because it's just been unbelievable. But first, uh, Billy Amick has been out for a little bit. I saw written a little bit earlier that maybe they were hoping to have him available at some point this weekend if it's just a pinch hit opportunity. What can you tell us about Billy Amick? Yeah, I, I think there's a good chance that he will be uh, available. Uh, Tony Vitello talked after uh, Tuesday's midweek win over Alabama A and M that they are hoping uh, that he will be available, and uh, they, they're feeling pretty good about him possibly being active. He had his appendix removed. I guess it'll be about three weeks on Monday from having it removed, and uh, he he apparently looks good defensively, and, and that's okay, but. Uh, swinging a baseball bat apparently does not go well with uh, having your appendix removed. Uh, so they're trying to get him in the cage and, and get more swings off. But uh, I think there's a chance that you could see him this weekend for sure. I saw a tweet last week from Wes, Wes Rucker, who works with y'all, that uh, this Tennessee offense is somehow, some way, hitting home runs at a greater clip than they did two years ago. Uh, is that surprising to you? Uh, now that we're in the middle of the season, yes. Uh, or I should say no, I got that backwards in my head. Now now that we're in the middle of the season, I, I'm not surprised. But if you would have told me this 
uh, before the season, then I would have been surprised. Yes. Uh, I didn't realize in the preseason how deep Tennessee's lineup is. I mean, this is a, a lineup that is deeper than the Tennessee team two years ago that probably should have won the national championship, the one with uh, Drew Gilbert and, and Jordan Beck. And from top to bottom, that lineup was really good. Um, a guy like Cortland Lawson, uh, he's already up to double A with the Nationals. And uh, Luke Lipsius, who was the all time career home runs leader until Blake Burke passed him this past weekend, he was hitting seventh, I, I want to say, if I remember correctly. Uh, so that lineup was deep, but it wasn't as deep as this one. Th- this lineup has guys sitting on the bench every night that should be playing every night, but there's only nine spots. And uh, most of the makeup of a lot of these guys that that are in the lineup or should be in the lineup, they're, they're power hitters. Uh, and they're not only power hitters where, where it's like a, a Joey Gallo situation to where they're hitting 200 with 30 homers. Uh, Blake Burke has developed into a terrific all-around hitter, can, can really beat you any way uh, possible. Whereas this time a year ago when Tennessee went to LSU, uh, he was swinging at anything and everything and just hoping he could make contact. Now he's, he's spitting on pitches that he shouldn't swing at and, uh, he's taking pitches off the plate and, and sending them down the left field line for a double, or uh, he's even willing to slap it through the, the, the shortstop hole and, and just settle for a single. So uh, there, there's a lot of that up and down the lineup, but uh, they, they're certainly known for, for their power, and they have one of the best strength coaches in the country, I believe, in Quentin Eberhard and uh, Josh Elander, an assistant coach that kind of deals with the hitting. He doesn't get enough credit uh, for the work that he does in the cage. So uh, if you would ask me preseason, yes, it, it is surprising, but uh, I, I didn't quite realize just how deep this lineup is, and, and it's kind of just all clicked. And, and so now as, as we've gotten midway through the season, uh, I, I can cert- certainly see how it's come together because the lineup always had potential, and it just seemed to click uh, in the best way possible. You mentioned Joey Gallo, one-time LSU signee. You didn't quite make it to campus, Joey Gallo. I always think about what guys like that could have done. Mookie Betts, same deal up there in uh, in Knoxville. Those guys would have been fun to watch in college. But now uh, earning big checks in Major League Baseball. I want to finish up with this, Ben, and we appreciate your time here on this Friday. Uh, LSU's 3-9, and nine, which is not very good, and on paper not, not great at all. But LSU did end Tennessee's season in Omaha last year. These two teams played in a, a Super Regional three years ago. Uh, is there some juice this weekend with the Vols in LSU? Well, first off, I'm glad that you have a better memory of Joey Gallo than I, because as a Yankees fan, I do not have a fond memory of uh, Joey Gallo a- at all. I-, I wasn't as bad as maybe some New Yorkers treated him, but uh, I-, I was happy to see him go, if I'm being completely honest. But, yeah, I, I do think there's a, a lot of juice, uh, and I-, I don't think Jay Johnson or-, or Tony Vitello would ever admit it publicly, but I, I don't know that there's any love lost between those two. And uh, I, I think that'll carry over uh, into the teams. And, and there's you've seen Paul Skeens and Dylan Cruz and uh, some guys on Tennessee's team last year move on. But there's also a lot of familiar faces uh, back. And I, I think uh, I, I wrote it this week. I think it's a budding rivalry, if not already established rivalry uh, in the SEC. I, I don't want to make it seem like it's LSU Arkansas or uh, one of those premier SEC baseball rivalries. But I think that it's on that trajection, uh, and partly because they've played so much yeah. uh, of late. And uh, there for a minute uh, before Jay Johnson got there, Tennessee kind of had LSU's number uh, when Tennessee was breaking through. And then, uh, obviously, LSU had Tennessee's number last year. So I, I don't think Tennessee fans like LSU's baseball program, and I don't think LSU's baseball pro or LSU's fans like Tennessee's baseball program. And I, I think there's some... Some, some intense feelings between the two sides that, that are going to be playing as well. So uh, I, I do think it's juiced up. Tennessee has had a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people have been interested in this baseball team all season long, but it, it, it feels like this is the most interest in, in a weekend uh, that Tennessee has had because of who was coming to town. Not only because LSU is the defending champs uh, and everybody respects their program, but also because I, I think that uh, with the way the last couple of years between the two sides have gone, I, I think, Again, I don't know that there's a lot of love lost there. Should be a lot of fun. Enjoy the baseball, Ben. We appreciate some time on this Friday. Yeah, appreciate y'all having me on, and hope y'all have a great weekend. Sure will. He's Ben McKee. Coast, uh, he covers Tennessee for Go Vols 24-7. He'll be at Lindsey Nelson tonight uh, for Tigers and Vols. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that, uh, that, that there's no love lost there. That, to me, usually uh, the, the beat writers on the team, which Ben is for Tennessee, can tell 
when there's a little bit of angst between one school or, or another. I, I certainly could sense that um, when I was covering LSU when they would play Vanderbilt. Um, I don't know that, that Paul Maneri and Tim Corbin were best buds at that point. Um, I certainly could sense that with John Cohen and, and Paul Maneri. And so I'm thinking that obviously Ben right now uh, thinks that Tony Vitello doesn't doesn't love LSU, and you mentioned he mentioned right at the top of that interview that Tennessee may have gone TBA there because LSU was late to announce Nate Ackenhausen in Omaha last year. That's probably not something Ben made up. That's probably something he heard. I'm just guessing, uh, and that makes things really interesting. Um, look, LSU needs wins in the worst way. We'll see if they can get them against a really good Tennessee team coming up this weekend on Rocky Top. We got one break and one segment to go. Back to close out this week on the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. ESPN Bet, ready to take you through all the huge uh, sports moments this spring. The exclusive sportsbook of ESPN has it all, including offers and promotions from Scott Van Pelt and Stephen A. Smith. From the playoff intensity to getting on the links and out to the ballpark, there's no better time to be a sports fan. Sign up today and new users get $100 in bonus bets for making any sportsbook bet. Download the ESPN Bet app today. What a play. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in partnership with LeBears Lake Charles. Terms and conditions apply. See app for details. Details. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other. Charles Hanegraaff, join us for the Monday edition of Live at Lunch from the Queen Casino, downtown Baton Rouge. We'll take a look back at the Masters and LSU's three-game set with Tennessee. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Monday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge.
This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Interesting matchup, uh, LSU and Tennessee this weekend. Very much unlike anything that LSU has seen to this point, because uh, Florida is a mess on the mound at this point. Um, they do hit a lot of home runs, but they they're a mess. Um, Tennessee's not to that level. Vanderbilt and Arkansas have great rotations and offenses that, statistically speaking, haven't been great. This is a Tennessee team that is just, it's very offensive heavy, and they don't have an ace like Florida does on the back end. So this matchup is not like any of the other four that LSU's seen thus far. Now, I'm not prepared to pick LSU to win because it would be really, really idiotic of me to say I'm not expecting a turnaround from this team on Monday. And then to come back today and go, oh, I think they're going to win two out of three in Knoxville. That's that does that's not how it works. So I will pick Tennessee to win the series two out of three. Um, would I be shocked if LSU won it? No, I told you on Monday. I think they'll win a series here soon. I think they'll win two in a row at some point soon. But you've put yourself in such a compromised position in the standings that it's just going to be tough to dig your way out of it. That's that's for sure. So. It starts tonight with LSU and Tennessee. Quick update from the Masters. Bryson DeChambeau is your solo leader at 7 under par as he plays the uh, the par 5 13th. Max Homa playing 18, one shot back at 6 under. Scotty Scheffler also 6 under. Scotty birdied number 2 but gave that shot back on number 5. Um, Danny Willett, former champion at 4 under par, joined by Ryan Fox. Uh, Cam Davis is at 3 under par. Uh, so is Lucas Oberg and Patrick Cantley. Right now, the top of the leaderboard, Bryson DeChambeau, Max Homa, and Scotty Scheffler as they play on in Augusta. All right, Beck, let's close out the week with a little take it or leave it. All right, first one here. 58-year-old VJ Singh is in at four over and will likely make the cut wearing what looks like to be Skechers. Take yeah. it or leave it? going to leave it. I, I don't need hoodies on the golf course. I don't need Skechers on the golf course. Let's just put on. Let's put on okay, but hon, let, let look. He's fifty-eight years old. He, look, I'm an old man. It's you're not, not an change. old. You're not an it's old. It's not going to change. I'm not going to think of it any differently. I don't like the clip art crew from Live out there looking ridiculous. I don't need CJ and seven VJ and seven different colored tennis shoes. I don't need hoodies. I need people to look like they're playing in a golf tournament. It's just. It's just the way it should be. It's Augusta. The golf elitist. You want to you head out there to Webel Beach and hack it around on a hoodie and some Skechers? I love that. That's great use of your Saturday. You want to play at Augusta in the Masters? Let's put some clothes on. All right, next one here. Diamondbacks pitcher Jordan Montgomery is leaving Scott Boris and is going to be signing with uh, let's, oh. he's going to be signing with Wasserman's Joel Wolf and Nick Shinnock, uh, sources told ESPN. Montgomery was one of the Boris Four, along with Matt Chapman, Cody Bellinger, and Blake Snell, who waited late into the offseason to sign, and all of them wound up with deals below pre-free agency projections. Montgomery will not be the last to drop Scott. Take it or leave it. We'll take that. Just to speak, somebody it. will probably leave. But, yeah, I mean, it's interesting, and the, the players' union is going to have uh, some, some negotiating to do because MLB ownership – and executives have determined that handing out seven, eight-year contracts on the whole is a bad idea. And I can just just personally point to Javi Baez, Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, all these guys that the Cubs looked at and said no uh, to, and they all have fallen off a cliff. And it's just you get to a certain age, and these guys are all throwing 100 miles an hour, and you can't catch up. And this is a young – all the sports are young man's games. You take out Tom Brady and LeBron James and – there's some of these guys who are just ridiculous, and the vast majority of the people who are good in all these sports professionally are 24, 25 years old. We were just talking about PGA Tour golf, talking about like the 90s. You were looking at 43-year-old Tom Kite and all these guys contending every single week. Now you turn on the Masters, and everybody that's good is 24. It's, I mean, it's just it's amazing. Uh, now, Max Homa and, and DeChambeau are a little bit older than that, but Scotty's in his mid, uh, mid-20s. mid Hogard, Willix, Fox, Davis, O'Bears in his early 20s. Like, Morikawa is real young, just out of college. Like, that's that's what sports is. So they're not going to give 31-year-olds four-year deals for 80-something million dollars. They just, they're not going to do it. There's too much proof that says it's bad. So you're earning potential, and you're, you're, when they're paying you for your best play is in your early 20s when you're on rookie contracts. So it's just a, it's, it's something that's going to have to work itself out with the market, but... And Scott Boris tried to play chicken, and everybody lost. 
All right, last one here. The Pels will clinch the sixth seed this weekend and avoid the play-in. Take it or leave it. Well, they're not playing at home right now, so they'll they'll take it. Now they got to come I'll home. And they got to they got to play one more home game. But I'll, I will take the late uh, the Pels. Um, you'll see them Sunday uh, in the afternoon against the Lakers to kind of finish things up. But yeah, I think the Pels are in a good spot. I think they're going to avoid the play-in, and I think that's a step forward uh, for the organization. I think that they've uh, they've had a good year. They've stayed relatively healthy. We'll see if Bi can come back. But uh, I'd love it if this town, if this uh, this area of the state got fired up for a playoff series here coming up next week. So we'll certainly hope for that. That's it for take it or leave it. All right, one for you, Beck. Uh, who you got to win the Masters tournament? How can you how can you not choose Scotty Scheffler? You would choose Scotty Scheffler. Yeah. Well, what if I gave you Scotty Scheffler or the field? I would take Scheffler, so honestly. Would I. Without hesitation. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but I would. He doesn't have a one over par round in his repertoire. He's going to shoot between 66 and 70 every day, and everybody else is going to give it back one day, and he's just going to take it because he's the best player in the world right now, and that's what's coming. He's one shot off the lead right now. Uh, I'm going to go watch a little bit of that before I head out to live after five. If you missed any of today's show, catch it on demand. Anywhere you find your sound, as well as on YouTube, Hunt on Saints, Hunt on LSU, and our full show is archived each and every day. Matt's going to drive you home and finish up your week with After Further Review. We're back same time, same place on Monday. Have a great and safe weekend. It is the Hunt Palmer Show. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana, is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind.